Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Today there was a major development in NASA's plan to fast-track people back to the moon by 2024. The president tweeted that he would be adding another $1.6 billion to NASA's budget proposal for the year 2020. Now again, I've, ma I've mentioned this before, but this is the proposal the president and the White House sends over to Congress and then Congress actually decides what happens. And But this is kind of cool because this is the first actual increase that the president has proposed over uh, you know, over previous years. So the way I understand the money is supposed to be structured is it's like $1 billion is targeted at crew development. There is a bunch of money for SLS to kind of get it through its current delays. That's probably money that's more or less going to Boeing because they're behind schedule. Then uh, there's a bunch of money for robotic exploration and uh, development of new technologies. And also they save a bit of money by de-scoping the lunar orbiting platform gateway, probably reducing the acronym a little, but more importantly, it's only going to be focused on the moon. So there was a press conference, Jim Bridenstine, of course, talking about all these uh, approaches and one of the things that came out was uh, standing by Orion, making it clear that astronauts will only go to the moon in an Orion capsule with a European upper uh, service module and on an SLS rocket. But the rest of the architecture is open to all sorts of commercial bidding. There's going to be at least a three-part landing vehicle that's obviously going to be developed and integrated by the various suppliers. But he ended with, I guess, with the big thing in that this program now has a name and it is Artemis. Now, Artemis is probably the most appropriate name for any lunar project. So Apollo was, of course, what we had 50 years ago. A lot of people think that Apollo must have been the god of the moon. No, Apollo is like the Greek god of the sun, but his sister, Artemis, is the goddess of the moon. And, you know, as well as being like up in the sky and awesome, she's also a great huntress and uh, is involved, incidentally, in Orion's demise. Apparently, depending upon which version you read, Orion tries to impress Artemis by essentially saying he'll hunt down and kill every animal on the planet and she doesn't like this idea so she asks Zeus and Zeus sends a scorpion to kill him but then she sort of realizes that Orion was actually a pretty cool dude and so they both get raised up. You know, Orion gets raised up into the sky and on the opposite side of the sky you have the scorpion that stung him to death. I love mythology and all that. Uh, you should go and read that. Uh, also She's known by the, in, in some parts, so in the northern Greek name, I guess, is Cynthia, and the Latin name is Luna. And you can actually see these when you talk about lunar orbits, because in a lunar orbit, you will have perilune and apolune to decide, define the closest and furthest point. But if the spacecraft has launched from the Earth and gone into lunar orbit, then it's called aposynthion and perisynthion. So that's uh, the, the, the northern Greek name. Anyway, because the name is so appropriate, it has been used quite a few times before. Obviously, Andy Weir had another uh, hit book with Artemis. But, uh, you know, going back, my kind of first brush with the Artemis moon program would be in the early days of the internet. Well, early days for me, mid-90s, there was something called the Artemis Project, which was a private organization building out the idea of a private lunar mission in the mid-1990s. It was a collection of amateur and professional engineers, sci-fi authors, and big dreamers. And, you know, it, it wasn't something small like the Google Lunar X Prize, although they did say early on that they wanted to land a rover on the moon with a camera. They were planning out, you know, a lunar habitat, which would be covered in lunar regolith to help control the temperature and protect it from radiation. They had a whole uh, ferry vehicle, landing system. And my favorite part was to save mass, the vehicle that would return them from the lunar surface to orbit uh, was stripped down so much that the crew would just sit on it in their spacesuits with no cabin or anything. Because, of course, that was the lightest way to travel. 
Yeah, their website had a lot of information about their architecture, a lot of discussion about extracting lunar oxygen and, and various things like that. One of the ways they were talking about funding this was through a TV show, a documentary which would follow the endeavours of this small team as they developed the hardware and sent it to the moon and broke new ground. And Sure, that does sound a bit like Mars One, but I think I would trust these guys more simply because the moon is a lot closer than Mars. Uh, the website is still there as far as I can tell and it does have a lot of their details of their architecture still up there so you know it might be worth a read. I think the organization still has meetings online at this point but you know obviously uh, obviously the landscape has changed somewhat since then. Anyway elsewhere as it happens NASA is currently running a mission called Artemis. It's an acronym, obviously, for Acceleration, Reconnection, Turbulence, and Electrodynamics of Moon's Interaction with the Sun, right? There, I mostly got that, right? It was actually originally a mission called Themis, which is Time, History, uh, Events, Macroscopic Interactions, and Substorms. Again, another acronym. If you haven't guessed by now, this is something which is looking at plasma interactions, uh, electrodynamics, electromagnetics, near the Earth. And originally it was five satellites launched at various altitudes and they would you know, orbit the Earth. And they were launched in 2007 and by the end of that initial two-year mission someone came up with the idea of taking two of the satellites that were far out and adjusting their orbit so they would eventually end up in lunar orbit and they could use the same hardware which had been analyzing the Earth's magnetic field and its interaction, its pleasant, you know, Earth's magnetosphere and apply that to the Moon's magnetosphere and look at various interactions. Uh, so yeah, that's been running pretty much ever since. It's still active. You can go to their website and you know see some of their results. They they looked at obviously uh, like the way the lunar dust interacts with the magnetic field. They can look at the plasma tail and how it interacts with the Moon. Yeah, it's a kind of interesting mission that's still actively running at this time. Europe also built a spacecraft called Artemis. It was a geostationary Earth observation satellite launched in 2001 on board an Ariane 5 rocket. Unfortunately, during the launch there was a malfunction and the spacecraft ended up in a, uh, the geostationary transfer orbit which didn't actually get to geostationary orbit. So it had to burn its chemical propellants to initially lift its orbit up and then spent a long time circularizing its orbit using its uh, gridded ion electron electric thruster. And so that did end eventually get there. It spent a number of years doing its work and then in 2017 it was finally decommissioned and placed into a graveyard orbit. The Canadian Space Agency have been developing a rover called Artemis. They started out with Artemis Junior and now they've progressed to Artemis Senior, which is an eight-wheeled robotic vehicle prototype. It can go basically anywhere. It's a really cool suspension system. It weighs about 600 kilograms and can carry about 250 kilos of other payload. Top speed is about one kilometer per hour, and maybe one day we will actually see it on the moon rolling over space rocks. Who knows? Coming back to the US, last year NASA announced its commercial lunar payload services program. And of course, a whole bunch of people came out with their proposals for hardware that would carry NASA experiments to the surface of the moon. And knowing their mythology, Yes, there was one of them named Artemis. The Artemis 7 developed by Draper in collaboration with General Atomics, uh, iSpace and Spaceflight Industries. So this would be an uncrewed lander which would initially land and do, demonstrate various technologies and eventually, hopefully, perform lunar sample returns because apparently we never got enough hardware and never got enough samples with the Apollo program. No, I don't know. Like, this is again another example and I'm pretty sure the name will change. Draper actually has some really great history with the Apollo program because they developed the guidance hardware for the Apollo program itself. And so this is, you know, 50 years down the line, they've continued to work in this environment. So, you know, there's a bit of lineage there, which is kind of cool. So anyway, coming back to the core announcement, one of the things that is clear is that we're probably not going to see an Orion capsule sitting on top of a Falcon Heavy or an Atlas V or a Vulcan anytime soon. They've made it very clear that SLS is the thing that will be carrying the Orion by the sound of things. 
Uh, that being said, you know, the proposal is just a proposal. It's going to have to go through all the usual budget wrangling. People will try to get their pet projects in. Money will be shifted around. But at the same time, I think that since there's a big chunk of cash in there explicitly to help SLS get back on schedule, I think that Richard Shelby will be happy and uh, probably won't try to take money from elsewhere. I, I don't know. We'll see what happens there. Uh, there's obviously still a number of cut programs, which we probably will see restored because nobody wants to be the one cutting those programs. And uh, yeah, well, I guess we'll see what happens in the next few weeks. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.